Uh, 20 years ago, you and I, uh, the well of the United Nations headquarters in New York City, doing a joint presentation of a NASA Digital Earth project. Uh, I think that was the first uh, live WMS Global Mosaic, 8,600 8, Landsat scenes that you guys out of JPL mosaic and put up on a WMS and we demonstrated to the world that we could do the glow WMS. That was 20 years ago. So good memories. It's good to uh, see you again here and be working with you again. And um, so now uh, Dr. Lucian Plessa with uh, Esri and going to talk to us about map serving uh, with an acronym. I'm sure he won't. Well, it's actually right below there. Lucian, please. Yep. So thank you, George. Um, as, as you said, it's been quite a while. Um, let's see, so I initially worked at NASA JPL. I'm coming from um, supercomputing background, and then I slide into satellite image processing, doing mosaics like George was saying about the Landsat mosaic. Um, and then I drifted towards web services. And about 10 years ago, I moved from NASA to Esri, but I kept working with NASA. So some of the presentation that I'm doing today is uh, NASA work, some of it is ESRI work. Um, the, the project itself, this ATSE, um, is, is, is a very small project as opposed to the ones that have been presented until now. It's basically a, a kind of a personal uh, project. Um, it is open source and it, I keep it kind of small and personal because I want to be able to collaborate with multiple organizations. So this way it's it's easier to do that than stamping a NASA or an ESRI um, label on it. Um, the acronym, um, it's it's easy to pronounce. It's pronounced ATSE. Um, and it means kind of the subtitle is, uh, is an Apache HTTPD uh, tile server ecosystem. Um, and the reason I chose that acronym is because it's easy to pronounce and it wasn't taken. Um, in this business, it's really hard to do, you know, map services, tile map server, all that stuff is taken. So this way, it's it's easy to, to separate. Um, okay, so that was the introduction. Um, the subject of the of the talk is is in general map web services, um, in particular tile services. As everybody in this uh, session should know, um, these are there's there's really two types of server side web mapping applications. Um, one is dynamic, uh, represented by OGC WMS, which as as was said uh, in in sessions before this, um, let you request anything you want anywhere you want and specify down to the pixel exactly how you want the data to be to, see, to be sent back to you. Um, it's OGC WMS, uh, also ESRI image server and map server. They kind of do the same thing. Uh, the difference between the image server and the map server is the data. Map server is, uh, is a drawn map, whereas image server is usually a, an image. Um, tile services on the other side, um, they're they're mostly static, so it should be dynamic and static, but it's they're they're known as tiles. Um, they're the technology behind sleepy maps. Um, it was really um, originally used to accelerate web maps. That was the the main the main reason to to introduce tile um, web services. Um, pro the standards are OGC WMTS, the web map tile service, um, and also uh, Esri image server and map server can be tile enabled, so they can have a dynamic aspect and a tiled aspect. The In this case, the clients request resources from a discrete set. So they request a single tile or multiple tiles from a set of tiles. It, they cannot, the client cannot request anything at once. Uh, it implies a predefined uh, tile grid on the server side that somehow is communicated to the client or it's uh, agreed before. Um, the main reason, again, for the tile services is, is server scaling. But really, if you think about it, what really separates the tile services from the dynamic tile uh, map services? And it's not the latency because we've seen really fast uh, WMS servers, uh, really, really fast dynamic services, and there's also some slow tile services. 
So the latency is not it, the performance is not it, the scalability is not really it. The real difference from the technology is, is where the complexity of the whole system resides. Is it server side, like in a dynamic service where the server has to understand a complex request and generate um, the result and then send it back to the user? Or it's on the client side, the server sends a subset of what it already has. There's very little processing done server side and all the complexity about drawing the map and trying to style it, trying to make it look like the user wants is done on the client side. Um, and these are really two endpoints. And traditionally, they have been very clearly separated. Um, ATSE is mostly an implementation of the, of the TAL services, but it's really exploring the space in between, trying to see if there's space to do TAL services mostly, but also do some server-side processing that enables extra, extra leverage on the server side um, without obviously losing the performance. So it's, uh, I'd say it's a, it's a very good tile service. Um, the, the classic representation of a tile service is really fast, really scalable, um, but it, it does allow a little bit stretching the limits of what a tile service means. Um, and in general, I'm thinking about a tile service as something that has um, server-side latencies, intrinsic latency um, of the server somewhere way below 100 milliseconds. Once it gets to 100 milliseconds, it starts to be um, too slow for, for what a tile service should do. So anything that's above 100 milliseconds should not really be considered a tile service, or at least not a good one. Um, the other part that I should say now is, uh, I'd say is, is mostly about um, raster tile services, not vectors. There's also vector tile services, but those are very different. Um, they're much less flexible because you can't really um, operate on the pixels like you can with the raster. Um, they're very particular formats. Okay, so this is the one slide that I have about ATSE. Um, again, the acronym comes from Apache HTTPD Tile Server Ecosystem. HTTPD being, of course, the original Apache um, software. Um, it's a modular, very performant, um, well-tested, battle-tested, um, web server, and Apache, uh, and I'd say builds on that. It's actually an extension to the Apache HTTPD specifically designed for, for tile services. It is open source under an Apache version two license. Um, the URL, it's, it's actually stored on GitHub. Um, the URL is there and I'm gonna put it back at the end. I'm gonna give more URLs. Um, it's composed of a collection of HTTPD modules that share a common request style. Um, this allows you to, to use them separately or combine them, stack them, and, and have the data uh, transition through different modules um, being transformed while it's, uh, while it's transitioning the module so that you obtain the, the desired tile service output. Um, internally, from the technological point of view, it uses HTTPD sub-request mechanisms to communicate between modules. Um, then if you add in the normal Apache HTTPD uh, mod proxy, which implements a reverse web proxy, you can actually pass these requests between separate instances or separate um, computers that can be loca located in the same place or they can be globally distributed. So this, this is a, a very nice way, Lego-like uh, way of, of uh, producing really complex servers from fairly simple um, modules, fairly simple units. Um, the common request style is using the normal um, level row column, but adds an extra parameter M, um, which enables the um, extension on, on multi-dimensionals. So you can map tile, time or elevation or a combination of the two to a single um, integer, to a single unit um, in that M. It's uh, M is, defaults to zero, and if it's zero, it doesn't have to be present, which makes the ATSE request compatible with WMTS and with ESRI REST and probably with many other um, MAP uh, protocols out there. What it consists of from the software point of view, there's a library, which is uh, the core of the shared uh, code, uh, Leap ATSE, which contains uh, codecs for JPEG and PNG uh, and some of the, the um, 
adds a specific configuration parsing and also um, web parsing, URL parsing um, type of uh, functions that are shared between any tile, web tile servers. Um, then there are um, source modules, um, mod MRF and mod eCache, which are uh, reading tiles from disk from different formats, from MRF format and fr or from um, eCache, um, and, and send them to as a response to the request. These are um, basically formats that I've selected for optimum performance. MRF is also my own um, software, my own format. It's a very good tile uh, storage format. And it's really hard to separate the MRF features from the ATSE features because they've been evolving together. So that's um, a bit of a, of a disclaimer. This presentation, I'm not going to get too much into the MRF, but they're really tied together. And a lot of the features that are possible in ATSE are because of the MRF format. The eCache is the Esri bundle format. I'm going to talk about those later. Um, there's also operation modules. So these are modules that can be stacked on top of the source module, and they do different things. There's a mod convert, a mod reproject, a mod fill, a mod add say PNG, and there's a couple of more. Um, these are kind of second level uh, modules that are used to build uh, more complex uh, tile services. There's also utility modules, things that don't actually match within ATSE, but are needed to, to produce a, a full-blown tile server. Um, they handle things like the protocol files, like when you do a WMTS request to get the capabilities, that's not part of the ATSE modules themselves, and it's done by some utility modules that, that handle JSON and handle uh, different protocols. Um, receive module is a is part of the communication mechanism. It's actually used to receive a tile from a, from a back-end service and offer it to a top-end service. Um, the rest of the presentation, I'm going to actually um, do some demos and then talk about different modules from ATSE in the context of that demo, how they're being used to show what you can do with ATSE. The first one is the big one. It's the NASA Worldview and Gibbs. Um, NASA Worldview is the client. Gibbs stands for Global Image Browse System. Um, the link below is for the for the user interface for the Whirlwind. Uh, for the sorry for the Worldview. Who that was a Freudian slip there. Um, so let's do a demo. Let's see. So um, this is Worldview. Behind it, it's a massive server. This is probably one of the biggest uh, tile servers out there. It handles um, close to a thousand different data sets. It's mostly based on MRF, so it's a bunch of MRF stored in uh, in a NASA site. Um, it probably has multiple petabytes of data. I'm still collaborating with this project, um, but I'm not actually part of it, so I don't actually know the current figures and what exactly how many data sets they're using. Um, the user client kind of shows what it can do. It's extremely powerful. It's based on Open Layers 3, um, and it's all based on tile requests that are being served. On the server side, this is mostly on Earth, which is the precursor to ATSE. It's a single monolithic um, type of uh, tile server, also an Apache module. So it's an extension of Apache, just like ATSE is, but it's, it's monolithic. So it does everything within a single module. Um, this was done about 10 years ago. And based on the lessons that, that um, we've learned from uh, using a mod on Earth, ATSE was, was uh, initiated to, to separate the functionality and make it easier to, to mix and match. Um, so this is this is on Earth, but it's really the same as ATSE. It's, ATSE can be considered the version two of on Earth. Actually, NASA refers to it that way. Um, and Gibbs is um, on-prem. Most of the data is on really expensive, really big um, sand drives, but they're in the process of moving to the cloud. They have multiple petabytes of data. Some uh, the the main feature of the data sets that um, that Gibbs and, and Worldwind offers is the temporal dimension. So all of these are temporal. You can move the slider here and pick up data from a different, different date. As I said, it's a very, very powerful client. You can choose by events. Um, 
you can do comparisons so you can pick a fire for example we have plenty of them now in the on the west coast unfortunately and you can go into layers and say i want to do a comparison you now have two separate windows you can pick what you want to see in each one of them you can move the time slider um, for either one of them individually and switch the data sets and then you can do um, you know swipe the data to see how the, the event progressed between the two days or you can do you know very fancy graphical ways of of exploring the differences between the two data sets uh, it supports mostly raster services but um, they also are transitioning into a little bit of vectors there's lots of metadata you can click on some of the data and find out um, exact information about what that point represents the data is stored as i said is stored in mrf it's a huge archive it's uh, time enabled and it's using mostly jpeg for the reflectance products like the background here and it's using PNGs for most of the um, data that that is um, categorical. So it's actually styled with a color palette that actually means something. You can pick, for example, one of these um, events like a hurricane and click on a specific date. And the color data here, it's actually a, a color palette in a in a PNG that shows Let's see, I have to go back to layers to see what it actually means. It shows precipitation rates and it gives you the color rate. So any case, that's um, enough for the demo. There's lots of stuff to see into, um, into worldview. Um, keep an eye on the earth, look at it anywhere you want. These are some of the, the highlights of the, um, of the Gibbs project. Um, it offers access to over 900. I think it's actually close to 1,000 by now. Um, it's temporal, updated daily in real time, so you can get data that it's as fresh as two or three hours, uh, or actually it's less than that now that they support uh, NOAA goes. And some of the products spawn almost 30 years, so there's a 30-year archive of daily products, um, and all of that is available as tile services. It's one of the most powerful tile servers out there. Um, they try to make this data available to many um, clients using many different uh, service protocols, standard service protocol. They support WMS, they support WMTS, which is kind of the native. The WMS um, is actually built on top of the WMTS, which is very interesting because it decouples the two. You don't have to maintain the two data sets. You, you maintain the tile service and the WMS just works on top of that. Um, one of their problems is that um, they want to make the data available in multiple projection. Natively, is geographic, and the grid they use is aligned with the MODIS resolution because they didn't want to oversample or undersample the MODIS data because it's very valuable, it's very uh, useful. So they pick that as the standard, but that makes them incompatible with standard uh, web applications like uh, Google Maps, which is the Web Mercator um, well-known um, tile grid. Um, so that's one of the problems that that ADS is addressing, and that's going to be um, talked about next. Um, they also support polar stereographic, uh, stereographic for the North Pole and the South Pole. Um, again, NASA Worldview is the primary client, but many other clients are compatible, and it, it's WMS and WMTS, so anything that's compatible with that will work, um, given the, the tile uh, limitations. As I said, the server is uh, on Earth, which is an uh, ADSE precursor. It's open source itself on GitHub. The link is going to be in the last uh, slide. Uh, currently, the data is on premise within NASA. It's in the process of moving to the cloud. Uh, the on Earth 2 is under development, will be based fully on ADSE, but they're already using some of the modules. And um, mod reproject is, is one of the most important modules in ADSE because of what it can do. Uh, it actually makes geographic lat lawn and web mercator uh, compatible so you can serve either way from a single copy of the data it does this by doing in core tile conversion so it's not it doesn't employ a full stack of of a projection engine and all that stuff it's actually a single code uh, hand tuned hand optimized to do that that conversion as soon, as fast as possible um, this is a really big deal for NASA. It saves close to two thirds of the storage space because Web Mercator Square it would have to be twice as big as the GCS if you had, were to store everything in either um, in in both tile uh, grids. So 
sa saving two thirds of the storage space when you're talking about petabytes and petabytes of expensive fast storage is a really big deal. And that's really the power of Mod Reproject. Um, it does this in about, I think there's a slide about it. Yeah, there's a slide about it specifically because it's so important. It does this in about two milliseconds. So it can it can read the tiles in the source projection. It can decompress them, resample, reproject, and recompress them into the output format, output image format in about two milliseconds per request on average. Um, if you know the the um, geometry of these projections, um, the horizontal axis is identical between GCS and Web Mercator. The only difference is the vertical. When you transfer uh, Web Mercator to GCS, you have to compact the data uh, at, the, at the north and south extremes up to 11 to 1. Um, this conversion from Web Mercator to GCS, uh, we employ within Esri for the GCS imagery. Um, again, this saves us work and space because we don't have to maintain two different um, collections of imagery. We have our Esri world imagery is about 150 terabytes. So that would be a lot of work to maintain it twice. Um, GCS to Web Mercator is what NASA uh, Gibbs needs and what it does. Um, it, it, it's the opposite. So you have to stretch it 1 to 11. Uh, obviously, stretching is more problematic because you lose the image quality. You oversample low resolution data. So you need higher resolution input, which means you have to switch levels. You need to read data from a higher resolution level to produce a tile at a, at a specific output resolution. Um, but it works um, either either case. It does two milliseconds extra latency. There's a single thread per request, but it's well bolted into the Apache HTTPD uh, multiprocessing model. So it works in a uh, worker uh, model or an event model really well. So it, the throughput is huge. You can have multiple requests being on the fly worked on by different threads at the same time. Um, and this two milliseconds includes the format transcoding. Um, it's using the, it can, it can use the system JPEG library, which usually is Turbo JPEG to, to accelerate that. The PNG is somewhat slower because PNG is slower. Uh, there's not much you can do about that, but it's really, really powerful. And it it kind of does away with the, the very hard decision that you had to make up to this point. How do I store my data? Do I store it in geographic or do I store it in Web Mercator? Um, the module itself supports geographic Web Mercator and True Mercator, the WGS84 based Mercator. Um, these are really good because they're separable 2D pro, uh, projections. You can do the X um, axis separate from the Y axis. So it, it takes uh, a lot less math to figure out the exact uh, projection. And then you only have to do um, resampling. Uh, it does this by a custom implementation. So it's really, really fast. And really, this module brings a tile service very close to a dynamic service because not only do you can change the projection, but you can change the tile grid, you can change the tile size without touching the data. So it's it's getting really close to being a dynamic service. The difference is that the control is on the server side. So the, the server management, the server administrator can choose what are the tiles that, 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 that um, he wants to support. And it's not up to the, to the um, clients to request any projections and any tile size that you want. This enables the server to be much more scalable because it's not subject to uh, abuse to people that can request to WMS, you know, single pixel at a time, overwhelming your server really fast. This is a really useful feature. Um, okay, second example is Earth Live. This is um, a collaboration with NOAA and Esri. It's... Um, Evolution. Yes. Yeah, you got 10 minutes left in the session. So if you want to leave five minutes for Q&A, it's up to you, but you got 10 minutes remaining. Okay. Well, this is going really fast. <laughs> okay, so this is Earth Live. It's super fast. It's actually um, data from 10 minutes ago. It's real time, and it's extremely fast. This is done through um, MRF, and it's actually stored on SSDs on an Amazon instance. This is the key to, to, the, to the speed. It's extremely scalable. This easily breaks through the 10,000 requests per second um, serving um, throughput. 
And it's done again because it's a single instance. Everything is in SSD, which is almost as fast as uh, memory. So the bottleneck is actually the, the network. Let's see. Um, there's multiple products there. There's actually the True Color, which I just showed. It's produced by NOAA Visualization Lab, and we take over the serving. Uh, there's also Band 13, um, which is an infrared composite uh, from three different satellites. It's two kilometers, so it's fairly low resolution, but the temporal um, uh, dimension accuracy is really, really high. It's every 10 minutes. In uh, this service, especially the, um, let's see, the um, we have different. We have a capability with implemented with that say of applying uh, color palettes on the fly. So this is the real data. It's grayscale PNG, but because it's PNG, I can actually use mod say PNG to add a palette to each and every PNG as it goes through the server. So I can present it with different color uh, palettes. I can present it like this, which is uh, highlighting the storms. But the problem is I lost the background or I can do a palette with transparency on the fly and show just the highlights of the storm on the real background. These are done with a single copy of the data on disk. The palettes are added on the fly. Let's see. Um, Mars is uh, astroarcjs.com. We have some of the biggest uh, Mars data sets out there. We include Caltech uh, CTX mosaic, which is a five meter mosaic. And the high-rise assembly, which is unique, we built as a test for ATSE. Uh, they really were built together. So the this Mars server shows most of the power that uh, that ATSE can have. Um, high-rise is 0.5 meters per pixel resolution. CTX is 5 meters per pixel. They're both enormous. CTX is about 5 terabytes of data. High-rise is uh, a mosaic in MRF format built from 50 terabytes of JPEG 2000 raw data. It's also, high-rise is also HDR, is 10-bit data. ATSA lets me, so this is the stack. This is the ATSA stack behind the Mars server. Um, basically, any one of these points represent the tile service. The base is the raw data, and then um, each uh, top-level stack module pulls data from the ones below. So for high-rise, which is one of the most complex, um, it's stored in 10-bit JPEG with a, with a mask extension. It's then converted to PNG 8-bit to make it compatible with browser. It's then aligned with the CTX grid because um, between five meters and, and uh, 0.5 meters, it's actually a factor of 10, which is not a power of two. So you, they're not compatible in, in the normal standard uh, tau resolution levels. So to eliminate that and not have to, to, to duplicate the data, it's actually done on the fly. So again, um, reproject is used to scale not to change the projection, but to scale and regrid so that the CTX grid is aligned with the high-rise grid so they can be shown in a normal browser using things like leaflet or open, open uh, layers. And then on top, you have the normal uh, PNG formats that are compatible with the browser. So this is very complex. There's multiple data sets. Um, it's really how the whole thing is possible. Um, the modules, again, CTX needs transparency. It's using uh, mod convert, which changes between a, a JPEG with a mask format to PNG. PNGs would be much bigger. So using this uh, trick of storing it as JPEG with a mask, the data set itself on disk is about one, one terabyte as opposed to five terabytes. The same trick is used on high-rise. High-rise is more tricky because it's 10-bit, but ATSE supports 12-bit JPEG again, with a mask, which works very nice because high-rise is also extremely sparse. There's only about 3% of the Mars surface. Um, and all of these are made compatible either with the browser or offering the, the raw 10-bit range for clients that can handle that, that can use that, uh, things like GDAL. There's actually WMTS um, GDAL drivers that can connect directly to an ATSI service. Let's see. So these are the challenges. Um, there's also mod eCache, which is a DNS-like um, specific for tile services module that can be put on top of a stack of other modules to accelerate the access or to take it closer to the end user to improve performance overall. So this is kind of the uh, final conclusion. Um, there's really three types of ATSE services. There's bulk tiles where the defining characteristic is storage. There's instant tiles, which are really fast, sub millisecond latencies. 
and there's deep tiles where you actually have some computation being done server side um, to produce much more refined data sets. There's different modules that can be used for either. Um, Mod MRF is really good for bulk. Mod eCache also works. Then you have extreme low latency, again, mod MRF, mod PNG, which doesn't actually decode or re-encode the PNG. It just adds a palette on the fly, which is almost zero computational load. And there's also deep, which is computation load, which makes it tricky because now you have to worry not about storage, but also about CPUs. But again, you can add um, eCache, you can add a DNS cache on top of it and makes it make it fast again. So I think that's about it. Here's the links of things that I talked about. I'd say it's the first one, uh, MRF. That's just the documentation. The MRF itself is part of GDOL. Worldview, Gibbs, uh, EarthLive, the demos that I've done. And I haven't talked about open space. It's a really um, powerful museum um, software to, for, for planetariums. So it can support multiple projectors. It's a universe visualization software that can use the Mars data sets to their full power and the Earth data sets to their full power. And I think that kind of concludes my talk. Thank you, Lynn. Excellent. Gosh. Come yeah, on I know away, this man. is this is a bit of a yeah, it's uh, probably too much for most people to follow, but um, I'm I'm just trying to to raise some interest and to raise awareness that this exists. Um, and it's evolving. So more features are planned. Let's take some questions. Looks like you've got at least two in the chat. Uh, should I see stuff be on packagers, radar? Sample of one million doesn't appear to be packaged. I didn't get that. It's in the chat? It's in the chat, yeah, yeah. from Nick. I don't see it. Uh, hmm. Look on chat again, see if you get it. That's weird. What was the question again? Uh, I can copy and paste and repeat it again. Or I could say it again, too, I guess. Um, but, uh, let's see. Try looking at chat again, because um, nothing. Oh, there oh. you go. Event. You go. Uh, yeah, sorry. Oh, well, no, you got to go to session. The event is for everything. Sorry. Well, in session is empty. You ain't getting nothing. That's, that is weird. That's my problem. So let me read it to you. Um, Nick asks, okay. should Otse stuff be on Packager's radar? Uh, sample of not sure why one colon Debian doesn't appear to package it yet. I do not know what that is. Um, I'm more than happy to go to one of the hallway sessions and talk directly. It's probably easier because I don't I don't actually know what. That's Nick Q. It's so K E W. Uh, maybe you guys meet up afterwards. Yeah. Next question: Any support for the HTTPS um, IIF.io? Hmm. I yeah, I'm not sure what that is either. So the answer is no. International imagery, oh, international image interoperability framework. Well, that's an interesting thing. Yes, I, so I, I'm, I'm not aware of it. Um, not either. One of the benefits of ATSA is that it's actually built into HTTPD. So uh, features that have to do with HTTP kind of get inherited. Things like HTTP2, it, it's, not, it's a non-issue. You get that with um, Apache. So I'm not sure what this... Uh, framework is, but if uh, Apache implements it, it will be just a plugin, basically. Let's move to Jim Hughes's question. If you have a WMS service that you wanted to create tiles for, would it be possible to use this to generate and host tiles for that WMS service? For example, Absolutely, you yes. Had a WMS of Open yep. Yes, yeah, so most most WMS servers servers um, use GDAL on the back end to read the data, and things like the MRF is fully supported by uh, GDAL. So all you have to do is just store your data in the right format and then uh, put the uh, the WMS server on top of it. If you want to put it on top of the tile service, again the solution is GDAL. GDAL supports uh, WMS formats, which are really WMTS formats. 
Um, so all you have to do is create these little hook files that st are stand in for a file, but they actually point to a server. And then your WMS server will read that tiny little hook and read the data directly from the server without you having to do anything. That's exactly how the uh, NASA um, Gibbs server is working. They use uh, the University of Minnesota map server on top of the cloud services. Okay, so we're going to need to wrap up. There is some additional information from Eric Bremer about uh, IIIF as an I API spec. Uh, but yeah, look up uh, when you get a chance. Uh, it's in IIIF.io yep. is the website. And Will do. I have a boatload of questions, but we're out of time. <laughs> yeah, and there's... So the GitHub uh, for us is out there. You can, you know, get my contact from there. You can pose your questions or try to use it. I would be more than happy to have more users. There's very few users. It's kind of an under the radar project. So, <laughs> except for Gibbs, <laughs> except for Gibbs, right? And nobody knows how Gibbs works, so it's a secret, right? I'm with you. I always uh, tout Gibbs as uh, one of the largest. Uh, Imagery yes, they do an amazing job, and it's a very small team. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Well, then the next session starts in four minutes on another channel. We'll finish off uh, with the last session on the geospatial track uh, in that session. So, see you all over there. Okay. No. Thank you.